Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Apologize for the delay, but we are ready to get started. Ms. Martine. Sarah Can we Hill. roll call? Oh yeah, let's, uh, let's do roll call, starting on my, on my right with Mr. O'Bell. Ruben O'Bell. Troy Whittemore. Derek Benavides. Vanessa Castillo. Okay. We have a quorum. Yes. Notice of a public meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Brownsville, pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V, the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meeting Act notice is hereby given that the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, has scheduled a regular meeting on Thursday, January 9th, 2020, at 5.30 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Old Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas, 78520. One, updates and comments. Um, there really isn't any, just very quickly. Uh, an email was sent out to you guys for uh, the noon meeting that we're going to be having for the code rewrite on 23rd. January 23rd with the, with the consultants. So that would be basically the, the only comment that we have. It was January 23rd? Yes. At, at, at noon. noon. Yes. Oh, that was at noon. Okay. <clears throat> we have enough confirmed for that meeting? Yes. Okay. Item number two, administration of oath of, oath of office and statement of appointed officer for new member. I, Vanessa Castillo, do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Brownsville, Cameron County of the State of Texas, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state, so help me God. I, Vanessa Castillo, do solemnly affirm that I will that I have not directly or indirectly paid, offered, promised to pay, contributed, or promised to contribute any money or thing of value, or promised any public office or employment as a reward to secure my appointment or confirmation thereof, so help me God. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Item number three, approval of the minutes for the regular meeting on December 5th, 2019. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion from Troy, <coughs> and a second from Mr. Golonsky. All in favor say aye. 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 Item passes. number four, public hearing and action, Paseo Residencial Subdivision Section 1, final plan. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, <coughs> item number four has been found incomplete. Okay. Uh, item is incomplete. Do I have a motion? To motion find to find it incomplete. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five, public hearing and action, Queensland Subdivision Section 3, final plat. So uh, as I mentioned to you pr prior to the meeting, five. items five through eight have all been found complete. I so find them complete. Find them complete. We have, a mo we have a motion by Mr. Golonsky to find to close, well, do we have to have public on this? Or this no, it's not no, for subdivisions. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so we'll complete the, okay. Complete the four, four, five, six, and eight. Okay, I have a motion for Mr. Golonsky to find five through eight complete. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number nine. Item number nine, public hearing in action on ordinance number 235-2019-040 to rezone from dwelling G to light retail G for to apartment H for 0.2496 acre of land out of the south 20.122 acres of block 19 El Jardin subdivision in track 33 share 19 Espiritu Santo grant and a 0.017 acre of land out of lot one block one amending plat of Canyon Valley subdivision replat located at 2732 Old, Old Port Isabel Road, Brownsville, Texas 78521. So this property has a total of 0 0.266 acres of land. The proposed uses apartments and the applicant is looking to rezone to apartment H. If you recall, this um, case has been uh, on the agenda previously. Um, as per your request, since we did have opposition from a neighbor saying that uh, to his consideration, the applicant was rezoning what was his property. Um, there has been litigation. We have the finalized court order and uh, city attorney has allowed us to proceed 
with with the case. So they are now able to to continue the motion uh, now that we have the, the final court order. So the 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 folks that were trying to this is that the elder yeah that, okay yeah so they were not able to locate any deed that proved that the land was theirs. Correct. The applicant uh, was able to prove that all of the land is is his. Okay. Wow. And so just to be clear, I'm sorry, Vanessa, you weren't here for this one. This is a this was an ongoing one. Um, so just to be clear, though, it and now and our recommendation, I believe the last one, I think it was two months ago, was that let the let the courts handle it. Correct. And then we would because there's no point in us making a ruling on it before the courts even have a chance to see it. So the courts did see it. Courts made a ruling. Right. Uh, and and the, then, final, the final court order was provided to city attorney. They reviewed it and they said it was okay to proceed. Okay. So, um, as previously mentioned in the past, um, there is dwelling to the vicinity of the property. There is light retail, there's general retail and apartment zoning. This is a 200 foot buffer map. There were 35 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is an aerial view of the property. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. <laughs> Staff does support this rezoning from dwelling G, light retail G, to apartment H. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's anybody from the public that would like to comment on this, please come forward, state your name at the podium. Good evening, Eddie Lucia here on behalf of Bronzeville Business Group. Um, I'm the attorney that was assisting the Bronzeville Business Group with this dispute involving the, the gentleman by the name of Jose Armando Mendoza. Uh, Mr. Mendoza and his family appeared here and uh, made some, uh, well, I guess, which are actually uh, defamatory statements about my client, of my client basically uh, encroaching upon his land and trespassing upon his land. Uh, through me, yeah, at first through himself, my client, and then through me, we had, before we, Mr. Mendoza showed up here, we were trying to explain to him that the land did not belong to him. Uh, what Mr. Mendoza <laughs> actually did was he then fenced my client's land uh, and would not allow him to access his land. Uh, we provided him several times as copies of the documents to show otherwise. Um, we, at my client's expense, in terms of filing fees, court costs, had to initiate a, 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 a suit against him. He eventually hired his own counsel. His counsel explained to him what the documents were, showing him that my client clearly, no, not disputed, was the owner mm -hmm. of the land. Uh, once it was explained to him by his own counsel, he basically walked into court, apologized, uh, said he ne didn't understand, uh, he signed an agreed order, basically saying he had no, no, no longer had any opposition to any of this. Uh, he apologized to my clients, to his family, because he also made accusations against him, my client's family uh, trespassing upon his land. Uh, what he basically needed was an explanation from somebody <coughs> independent to show him that this was my client's land. Part of the order also was to, that he agreed, and which he signed, and which he provided to the city's council, was that he has no opposition whatsoever to the uh, application uh, for rezoning that my client has uh, filed. So uh, I just wanted to make those comments other of, of what happened, what transpired, what happened in court, how it was resolved, resolved. because these comments that were made uh, about Mr. Menchaca and, and his company, Bronzeville Business Group, are being made out in public and they were completely false and we just wanted to make sure that we dispel that notion that he in any way trespassed on this gentleman's land. No problem. No problem. Let's so try to proceed. Yep. We have to just put what it is and what it is. Yeah. Awesome. But thank okay. you. Thank you for that explanation and and best of luck to Browns of Business Group. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, any other comments regarding this uh, item? If not, I will entertain a motion to close public. I make a motion to close the public hearing. A motion and a <coughs> second. All in favor to close public comment, say aye. 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 All right. Do I have a motion on the table? Move to approve. 
approve the rezoning. I have a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. I have a second from Mr. Obell. All in favor say aye. 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 All against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Best of luck to you guys. Item number 10, public hearing and action on ordinance number 235-2019-067 to rezone from General Retail F to General Retail G for lot two, block 242, Brownsville Original Town Site, Cameron County, Texas, located at 744 East Ringgold Street, Brownsville, Texas, 78520. This property consists of 0 0.1377 acre. Um, the proposed use is for a duplex and the property is fronting East Ringgold Street. The applicant is looking to rezone the area district to be able to accommodate the use. This is an aerial view of the property. They're a single family in, to, the, to the east and to the south. There's also commercial business yeah. to the north and the west. The predominant zoning within the area is general retail. There is also dwelling within the area as well as, as light industrial. This is a 200 foot buffer map. There were 34 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is a street view of the property. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. Staff to support this rezone from General Retail F to General Retail G. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's anybody that has any comments regarding this item, please come forward. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close public comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve second. based on staff's recommendation I have a motion to approve and a second all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. motion passes item number 11 public hearing in action on ordinance number 235 2019 068 s to allow apartments and apartment use in dwelling G for lot 26 block 1 central pay subdivision Cameron County Texas located at 2521 old Port Isabel Road Brownsville, Texas, 78526. So the applicant for this property is requesting to allow apartments on a property that is currently zoned dwelling G. Um, this property has 0 0.72 acres and the proposed use is apartments. The property is fronting on Port Isabel Road. This is the aerial view of the property. To the west, there's a single family dwelling. To the north, there's a single family dwelling and commercial business. And there is also apartment within the vicinity. As you can see, there's a variety of uh, different types of zoning within the area. There is dwelling, general retail, medium retail, medium commercial, and light commercial. This is a 200-foot buffer map. There were 18 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is a street view of the property. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. I do want to point out that even though this uh, application began as a specific use permit uh, by the applicant, it was recommended by staff to turn this into a rezoning given that there is also uh, other apartment uses within the area and there's already a variety of zoning um, within proximity of, of this property. So staff is recommending to support a rezone from dwelling G to apartment G to be able to accommodate the use that the applicant is requesting. 0.77 acres and that's how many, what are they proposing? How many? So G would allow them to put 12.5 uh, units per acre. They're basically asking for <coughs> six units, I believe. Six? Yes. Is there enough parking spaces for six? <coughs> yes, yeah, so the, they're above the yeah. The size of the property would allow them more than six. Okay. Um, they're just capping it. It right would allow like about what? About nine, nine and a half, ten. It would be nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's any comments regarding this item, we are on item eleven, right? 11? Yes. 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 Item eleven. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to close public comment. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of closing public comment, say aye. 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 Okay. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Golonski. Second. Second. I second I have, that. I have a second from, it's going to go to Vanessa. 
Jump Sorry, in there. Okay. Jump in there. Second for Ms. Vanessa. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Item number 12, public hearing in action on ordinance number 235-2019-069 to rezone from dwelling Z to light commercial Z for 19.631 acres of land out of a 66.70 acre tract consisting of part of part of blocks 45 and 55, Palo Alto Grove subdivision number one, share 22, Espiritu Santo Grant, located near Old Dallas Road, Brownsville, Texas 78575. So this applicant is looking to keep the same area district. They're just <clears throat> wanting to change the use district from dwelling to light commercial to be able to accommodate a construction company and equipment storage. Their company currently exists in a different location. They just wanted to uh, transfer it to this property. Um, this property has 19.631 acres and it's fronting Old Dallas Road. This is an aerial view of the property. There's a lot of undeveloped land within the area. There's also the correctional facility to the north. There's also the, the Cameron County just built a uh, maintenance facility directly abutting this property. And uh, the subdivision Villa Los Pinos is to the, to the west. And the sports park is also to the south. So within this area there is uh, Dwelling, there's uh, light commercial, general retail, light retail, and yeah, apartment the, zoning. The, 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 the this is a 200 foot buffer map. There were 12 mile lots and zero written opposition. Here's an area of the property again. What are they going to do with it? They're just rezoning it? So the current zoning, which is dwelling, would only allow a residence as of this moment, but rezoning it to, to the use district that they're requesting would allow them to have the, the, their construction company operating there. So it would be the same type of zoning that the county facility has directly to the north of them. Okay. Did we, uh, I, knew the, I know the dispute last year was that we had rezoned that, uh, that entire track just to the south of that to be residential uh, and it was a CDCB project and then right. we had the industrial cord that they wanted to the uh, uh, GVIC was trying to rezone the entire uh, pl complex out or everything out there basically turn it industrial do we know is that has that been been settled did I know the last I heard was that CDCB was going to be was going to be selling, selling it so well, if um, if I'm correct the CDCB is continuing their their development to build right yes so yes. so then that and that would be because that was where where, where some of the that? some of the strife that we came across last time was that we had we had just approved the that massive subdivision for CDCB and then right. GBIC wanted to do the uh, industrial. Rezo industrial and then the, but the last that, that and they and they spoke here the boat they both did uh, GBIC and, uh, or yeah GBIC and CDCB that they were in the process of selling the land off uh, GBIC was or I'm sorry uh, GBIC. yeah GBIC was going to was going to buy the land right. but yeah that was where so as of, but as of right now that project for CDCB is still continuing is what we understand and that's where I would have I, I, I would uh, well uh, let's finish up that let's finish up public comment but we'll I'll, uh, we'll discuss I'll discuss my comments later okay so this this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan the staff supports this rezone from building Z to light commercial Z 5CZ all right ladies and gentlemen this is a public hearing if there's any comments we are on number 12 <coughs> Please come forward and state your name. Make a motion to close the public. I have hearing. a motion to close the public. Do I have a second? I do. Second for Mr. Golonski. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve. Hold up. Hold up. I just got to, I got to, my, my, my issue with this is the same thing that we came across last time, which was we had, there was the, when, when, when both CDCB and GBIC left here, they told us that they were in the negotiations for 
GBIC buying the land from CDCB to scratch the, the entire subdivision project so that that whole corridor would then go industrial. It but but it, didn't, it didn't happen. So as of right now, we still have, we, we PNZ, had still have approved that massive subdivision and where at last time we said, okay, no, we're not gonna approve this, especially this rating of, uh, of industrial because they could essentially put a concrete plant, um, you know, leather, yeah, tan they, leather tanning. They, right. they <coughs> offered to buy CDCB out, yes. but they didn't. But they didn't. So now CDCB is coming back and they're gonna build the houses there. Yes, and so my, my concern would be that we just approved a, we, we, at this point, we've still just approved this massive subdivision to go in and again, we're getting a, another industrial type of facility that's gonna be going in right next to a lot of single family housing. And so from-, from And a school. And a, and a, and a school, yeah. So we got an idea Frontier school that was, I think idea Frontier or Frontier, Frontier or something like that was, was still planning on going out there. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's still that was still on the table. You're right. I hadn't th I had forgotten about that. So my from from my perspective, unless the unless the well, and even then we've closed public, um, and we didn't hear from the people that are that are the applicants on this. But my vote on this would be to either deny or table it to allow um, the applicant to come back and explain what's going on in this because. I, I don't feel comfortable. Okay, you make a motion. Hold well, I don't want to make, I can't, I, I don't want to, I'd rather let you guys make the motion rather than myself I, make I the motion. I made a motion and it'll die, if, if there's no second, it'll die for lack of a second. Yeah. Then you can make the motion. Okay. No, I'm not gonna make the I can go ahead and make the motion to table it. Yeah, I, I would I would support that, okay. Derek. I, I, we've heard about that and I don't want the same thing happening again. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion from Vanessa and a, and a second from Ruben to table this item. What's the, uh, on the table, how long does it take to come back? Well, in this case, you're tabling it because of a concern. So we could do it uh, as you've done in the past. You can put a parameter, or sort of like you did the one on Old Port Isabel, that you said I'm it won't come back until. I don't like it much to deny it. And then got, but if, they, if, if it's a motion to deny, then they've well, got to reappoint. No, I'm not. I'm not saying deny it. I'm saying give give the applicant a chance to explain because at this point I don't. I don't. I don't. Well, I believe the applicant is here. So. Okay. So, well, we close, but we close public already. You can reopen it. I mean, okay. Just uh, unless I mean, I'll, I'll reopen if you guys would like a chance to to explain. So, I'll, I'll file a motion to reopen public second. comment. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So. Public comment, go ahead and come on forward and state your name. Sure. Hi, sir. How are you all doing? <clears throat> there is a number. Uh, please, state, please state your name, I'm sorry. My name is Abel Gonzalez. I'm with, I, I represent the Family Limited, Gonzalez Limited Partnership. And I'm with the JT Paving Company. I've been with this company for over 50 years on the city. And uh, I want to relocate my company up there. Since I bought this property from the county, and the county was going to build a warehouse at that time there, which they were already building. And I was next to them in, in, uh, in order to build in my own company there, and I don't see no difference on the corner, uh, the same block of land next to me. You all give permission to the county to do the same thing I'm going to do. So I don't remember. I, I I don't know if I was here for that. Okay. Yeah. So what is the difference? The it probably at that time it must have been out of the city limits when they what? gave it to the county. You know, I it would have been. I, it, I, I wasn't here neither. He's saying that it would have been, oh. at that time, it was outside city limits when, when that was probably approved. Uh, no, it wasn't outside city limits because I already find out about that. 
Yeah, it so was some, about like a something. year ago. Year and a half. Twenty seventeen. I believe. Twenty seventeen. Okay. So. So the, if you under, if you understood our, our the issue that we were talking about earlier is that we had it had been presented to us before that uh, last year uh, that CDCB was going to be putting in a massive subdivision um, and right after that we had a we had GBIC that was wanting to rezone the entire. Uh, area around and to the north of this subdivision to go heavy industrial, and so we put we 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 voted against that, just because the fact that we we didn't as a, as a commission at that time the majority didn't want to approve a five I think it was a five C J or five C uh, industrial to go right to be literally across the street from a subdivision that would in turn. Uh, in any in any city would would hinder uh, the sales of these single family housing and so that was our that was our only concern and, and as a, as the last time that we had that conversation there was we we weren't sure who was going to be selling to who uh, and so that was that was the issue that we had. Well, I'm next to the. I'm sorry. I'm next to the county there, and yeah. I bought the land from the county and for that purpose, and now you're going to leave me out. I'm gonna make a most. I'm gonna make a most to approve it, but you're gonna to have to fence it around. Oh yes, it's fenced already. Mm. I second that. It's already fenced, and and I'm next to the other county. I mean, the same acres, the same amount of yeah, acres. Hold on, we're going to go back to the original here, because I originally made the motion to approve, so we need to settle that, and if I don't get a second, it dies for a lack of a second, then we can go, right? Because my original motion was to approve, then we started a dialogue. Are you guys but following there, but me? But there on? was no second. There was right? no second. Yeah. So it died because of lack of motion. Okay. So I can go back. You know. So you can make another motion. And yeah, already made. Just, just no, before, Mr. Chairman, what exactly is your reservation? Just to be clear. That we've we as a commission had approved a very large single-family subdivision. And are and and is still, to, to my knowledge, and based on the knowledge also that Mr. Golonsky is providing, that it is still going through. So we still have that zoning approved for single-family housing, and now we're we are we were we were being approached by GBIC, and then now we're being approached by this applicant to rezone this to heavy industrial that would allow for concrete companies. Leather tanning, all the all these types of all these types of, of uh, well, and they could no, tell no, the rest of it I didn't right across. No, 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 no. I, I, I just, just want to ask what he's asking. He was he has he provides he makes streets he paves and Paving. all that. Stuff. I I I totally understand as far as what the company does, but if you can Martin, if you can tell us what does this zoning allow up to. Right, so uh, I, we just want to point out a few things. The use that the applicant is proposing, it's not considered industrial through our definitions. He is applying for fifth commercial. The uses that you're talking about, concrete plants, that's chemical industrial. plants. So that's not, okay, that's, no, that's, that's not, my misunderstanding. That's commercial. Okay. Uses uh, such as the ones you mentioned require ninth commercial, which is what GBIC was trying to rezone the, the Thank uh, you property that's within the vicinity of the single family subdivision, that's what they were trying to rezone it. Now, I would also like to mention that GBIC was there before CDCB. CDCB purchased the land with the knowledge that GBIC was there and that could potentially someday rezone that property. And they still went ahead and purchased the land. So yes, right now, the rezoning that you guys had approved last year uh, or the year before that, in, well, in 2018, um, 
it has been finally approved by city commission. CDCB is moving forward with the single family project, but still with the knowledge of the, the okay, potential so use that's knows. gonna be, that may come in the near future or, or maybe even longer uh, on the property that's directly to the east. Now, going back to what uh, the gentleman's trying to um, establish on this property, uh, as I mentioned, it's not considered an industrial use. It's okay. only fifth commercial. Staff supports this, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. We, we okay. do support it. So just, uh, just, just so that I'm, uh, and I apologize, I, m I misunderstood that. I thought that it was going to be the heavy industrial. No. Please do me a favor and just clarify for me what, what is the, the limits up to on the fifth commercial then? Basically the construction what they're, company, what they're, basically the offices of the construction company <laughs> and the, the storage of his equipment. And don't get me, and don't get me wrong, Mr. Gonzalez, I know, the, I know GT Paving very well. You guys are freaking fantastic. I, you guys have done great by our community. You guys are amazing. We love you guys, or at least I'll speak on my behalf. It's nothing personal, but it's, uh, we, uh, we just got to make sure that we're uh, doing dot and I's crossing T's. So, uh, so then, yes, I apologize, Gen gentlemen, ladies, lady, ladies. Uh, I apologize. I misunderstood that the that it was going to be going heavy industrial. I did not realize. I, I apologize. I must have misread it or uh, didn't see it properly. But it is going okay. fifth, fifth with commercial. With yeah. These tractors, trucks, and all that. And all I ask for is to have a fence around it. Probably. So now can we go back to my original yes. uh, original motion? Make yes. a motion to approve based on staff's recommendation, and you'll put a fence. They're, they're gonna, Naturally. yeah. They're gonna have to, anyways. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to be recommending a fence, I, I, our suggestion would be to do a, basically a conditional overlay, saying we'll approve it with the condition that he just. Do fences. you guys oppose to that, sir? Uh, the, the county don't have a fence. I want a fence around. Well, that does, the, the county doesn't have it. Doesn't mean nothing. But, but like I want I said, a fence around because they were gonna make some hundreds of homes down there just to. Look yep. nice. <laughs> I understand, but I, I ain't gonna put seven feet of fence. I'm gonna put the fence around my property in 1980. Okay. It's already a fence already. Okay. Do I have a second? Oh, okay. So can, can you repeat your motion? I make a motion to approve based on staff's recommendation with the conditional overlay of a fence, perimeter fence. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve based on the conditions. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> all against? No nays. Motion carries. Happy New Congratulations. Year. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Good luck on moving out there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 13, public hearing in action on ordinance number 235-2019-070 to rezone from general retail F to General Retail G for Lot 5, Block 95, Brownsville Original Town Site, Cameron County, Texas, located at 1012 East Jefferson Street, Brownsville, Texas, 78520. So the applicant is looking to rezone the area district for this property no, from F to G. This property has 0 0.14 acre and the proposed use is a duplex. It is fronting East Jefferson Street. Here's an aerial, aerial view of the property. There's commercial business, single family, uh, dwelling. There's also some apartments within the area. The, ar the area is predominantly general retail. There's also apartment and medium retail within the vicinity. This is the 200 foot buffer map. There were 29 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is a street view of the property. This request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. Staff to support this rezone from general retail F to general retail G. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. Any comments regarding this item? All right, I will entertain a motion. I'll entertain a motion to close public comment. Do I have a motion? Motion, do I have a second? Second for Mr. Golonsky. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And do I have a motion regarding this item? Steph, Steph recommends. Steph to recommends. support. Yes. I so move to approve it. 
All right. I've got a motion to approve. And I have a second. Second from Mr. Robel. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 14, public hearing and action on ordinance number 235-2019-071 to rezone from general retail F to general retail H for lots 8 through 21, block 64, track 1, pardons addition to the city of Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas, located at 1230 South Expressway 7783, Brownsville, Texas 78520. So the applicant for this case was looking to also rezone the area district from F to H. The current use district is general retail. Uh, their proposed use is a mixed use plaza. So basically what they're going to be doing is they're going to have a two story building. The second story is going to be residential or for residential purposes. And the first floor is going to be for retail. typical businesses. Uh, as of right now, from what they have mentioned, it's going to be an inspection station on um, one end and also a vehicle registration office. <coughs> so the other suites are still up in the air as to what the use may be. Uh, this property has 0 0.49 acre uh, and the property is on, it's fronting South Expressway 77. So this is an aerial view of the property. There is single family directly to the south. There is commercial business and there is also multifamily within the area. The predominant zoning is general retail. There's also light industrial and apartment zoning. This is a 200 foot buffer map. There were 30 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is a street view. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. Um, staff does support this reason from general retail F to general retail H. I do want to point out we did meet with the developer um, because staff did have some concerns, especially because of the uh, inspection station use. Um, we just wanted to provide some sort of or sort out the concern uh, regarding noise complaints or potential noise complaints for the residential properties that are directly to the south. Since it's an inspection station, they will be honking their horn periodically in order to, to check that it's working. It's right close to the express right Yeah, so it isn't. Now, inspection station for? For vehicles. Regular for, vehicles. Yeah. This is right. not an 18-wheeler? No. OK. No. Yeah. yeah. You're right there by the expressway. OK. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's any comments regarding this item, please come forward. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close public comment. All in favor, say aye. 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 I have a motion. Approved. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Golonsky. I'll second that. I have a second from Ms. Vanessa. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 15, public hearing and action on ordinance number 235 2019-072 to rezone from apartment J to general retail J for lot 7, block 82, Brownsville Original Town Site, Cameron County, Texas, located at 603 East Washington Street, Brownsville, Texas, 78520. So the applicant is looking to change the use district for this property from apartment to general retail. Area district is to remain the same. This property has 0 0.14 acre and the proposed use is a snack shop. Uh, this property is fronting East Washington Street. This is the aerial view of the property. There is commercial business predominantly in the area. There is also single family dwelling. There is also multifamily and there's a church uh, near nearby. Church? What church? There is, it's, uh, can't remember. It's on the corner of Elizabeth and, and 6th Street. It's okay. Elizabeth and Street, it's a pre the Iglesia, I forgot, uh, used to be the good, if it's, if it's Elizabeth and Six, that was the old uh, Good Shepherd uh, yeah, but now church. It's the yeah. Gonzalez is, is a, a pastor. Yeah, it's a pre I think it's a Presbyterian church. Okay. What, what uh, do they want? It's going to be a snack shop. Basically, it's going to be fast food snacks. People just go and purchase, uh, you know, the, and where 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 would this be? It's it's on the corner on the corner lot, 
uh, on Washington and 6th Street. Is that what it is? No. Corner of Washington and 6th. Okay. You have the so right behind BBUV Bank. Okay. Yeah, the Compass Bank. Compass Bank. But wasn't that like a, a, a school or something on the corner? That's the it's school's a vacant property right now. Oh, it's vacant right yes. now? Yes. The school's directly across Elizabeth from that church. Uh, uh, I forgot what kind of school it is. But yeah. We had, we had approved last year in like the soccer field. Does it have, uh, is it going to have enough parking for people to drive in and out and all that stuff? Well, that would be, uh, basically it would be reviewed through the site review process. Um, our combinations plans mm -hmm. examiners would review the plans and determine if there is enough parking based on the square footage of the, of the, of the building. But uh, that would be something that they would definitely have to comply with. <coughs> Hold on, we got, we still got to do public. Yeah, we, Go ahead. we have two slides left. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the zoning within the area, there's a variety of zoning. There is apartments, there's general retail, medium retail, and professional office. Yes, no, but like I said, if you have people coming to buy stuff and they get in and out, in and out, that's a lot of traffic. Well, they're going to, I mean, they're going to have to, the site review, what he's saying, the site review is going to still have to approve that regarding. Yeah, okay, I'm going to make a motion. Hold on, we got, he has to still finish presenting. Just one more slide. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 200 foot buffer map. There were 28 mail outs and zero written opposition. This is the street view of the property. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan. <laughs> Staff. The, the thing it's it's Which one? Age. Yeah, I don't remember this. Like I'll buy that tomorrow. And as many trees. <laughs> All right. Is next to the Yes. So staff does support this reason from apartment J to general retail J. It's a vacant lot right now, so yes. regardless, so they're going to have to get it approved as far as the ingress, egress. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. Are there any comments regarding this item? Yep. Please step forward and step uh, say your name uh, here at the podium. Uh, my name is Jose Rodriguez. Uh, I used to work at Troyani's law office, mm -hmm. and uh, my desk faced outside. I can tell you right now, there's no parking whatsoever in that area. So unless they're planning on building a parking lot, but even then, a lot of our clients would park on the uh, private property of the BBVA Compass. So parking's a uh, a big thing. Another thing too is uh, Troyani's office is also a historic home. And so I believe building a snack shop next to a historic home kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look very nice, especially with we're trying to keep our historic district looking. Mm -hmm. uh, those are my main no, two concerns. Uh, one thing does kind of happen. About the parking, well, we know that there's no parking in downtown anyway. But if, if they can provide sufficient parking for what they're going to do, there's not much we can do about it. Yeah, I mean, it still has to, it, it's like, like yeah. they're saying, it still has to pass, um, you know, site review. They're going to make sure to determine that it's got uh, sufficient parking mm -hmm. uh, for whatever size, you know, building is going to go on there. It has to fit, has to still meet any, you know, all the city guidelines that everything, every other building downtown or uptown or all around town has. Um, you know, I, I get, and I guess the, what I've said before, uh, the time that I've been here is it's hard, especially uh, from my perspective on, on vacant lots that have been sitting around Brownsville for so many years that nothing has happened to them. Um, they've been for sale. People have the opportunity to purchase them. Um, people often don't, but then we'll get, you know, times like this where people will then, you know, uh, voice their, their concern regarding what's going to go up there after somebody does buy it and is trying to, you know, uh, develop the land um, themselves. Now, we may not always agree with, you know, what goes uh, on those lots. Um, what I, would I agree with you that a snack shop is, you know, the best option for, you know, to go next to a historic home? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, yeah. but 
I, I'm not the, the one that purchased the land um, and is choosing the you know best and, and best option for for uh, you know monetizing it. So uh, I you know apologize from my perspective. It's hard for us to make those kind of decisions. I um, and there's also like all the retail that's around there. They're like out of the old homes that are there. Uh, I believe from my from remembrance is that the actual buildings don't start until you reach downtown, which is around 8th Street uh, over. So, uh, I mean, actual like construction of like shops or something like that, I don't believe there's any around that area. But yeah. isn't it that the, 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 the restaurant that, that... There had been a restaurant operating, I think, on the other side of Troiani's office. No, wasn't there a restaurant or is there still a restaurant that's um, operating on that other side? I don't remember of a restaurant. Uh, I know that if you drive by, most of it is that there are buildings. Like even... Uh, Often it's residential, but... Yeah. I mean, there's not really, like he says, something has to happen with those lands. And yeah. not to mention, I mean, just because I remember our neighbors, uh, we had a lot of, of clients that would come in. We would get uh, yelled at pretty periodically because they were upset that we were parking. Even though it's public property, Sure. Uh, they didn't have any parking because uh, people were parked there. And we, we get the we get that we get that that complaint often, and unfortunately, we wind up using the that's not our yeah. you know department you know parking and, and whatnot. And, and you're right, it is you know it is public parking as long as it's not you know in a red zone or yellow. Um, but it's hard. It, it's it you know for us, you know, especially even on a traffic you know issue. I mean, it's downtown also. You know, yeah. it's it's a uh, it's there's going to be cars. There's been cars. This isn't uh, something like this on a, on, a, on a property that small is not going to you know boost the uh, the, the uh, traffic volume all that much. Okay. Well, no, that's all. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. Thank you though for, for coming in. For what it's worth, Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with with the gentleman. I mean, I think you know Mr. Tarani has done a wonderful job at you know getting that house to where it's at. I don't know what the parameters are that the city uses to approve something like that. I think it's a site for sore eyes. You know, putting a snack snack, uh, you know, retail shop or, or snack shop right next to that. But then if you go down, down, further down the road, you have most of the historical buildings are downtown. There are stores next to them, uh, restaurants next to them. So it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just, but it kind of reminds me of it. And, and just to mention it is, um, you know, downtown is, I think there's a plan to revitalize and there's a lot of historical um, you know, places and that could that could be absolutely beautiful. But you see the, you know, I drive through here every day to get to my office and you see the Santisima Muerte in the, in the middle of a window, yeah. in, right in the middle of Smack Downtown Browns, across the street from actually uh, Market Square. Yeah. So it is what it is, but it, yeah, it, I, agree it with, is, I agree with you. Yeah, it is unfortunate. <laughs> it's just I, what to say. The, the, thing that we've, the thing that we've come across so many times, you know, and, and I remember most, you know, recently is, you know, like development on West Alton Glore. You know, it's it, when, you know, a lot of that was residential back in the day. I remember when, you know, that West, Alt, West Alton Glore was way outside the city limits. Um, uh, I just dated myself there. But it, it you know, when that, we've been rezoning that to commercial, it's hard, it's hard to not do that, especially yeah. with vacant land. And like on this, we come across it again, vacant land uh, that's been sitting there for sale for a long, long time, but no one has bought it until one person finally didn't decided to develop it. So I agree with you as far as it's, it, it, it could potentially be a, 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 you know, an eyesore, but it is what it is. And, and I just want to point out that since it will have to go through the site yeah. review process and the site review process, will require for it to go through historic preservation That's because right, yes. it's within the historic or Good overlay. Point. So concerns such as that will be weeded out as we go through the process. Uh, and and that, that will, like I said, will be to the site review process once. That's a great through. point. Thanks for bringing that up. It is going to, that is historic district. So it is going to go for, before them and, and good luck to the applicant right. uh, going before the, the, uh, the historic uh, board. So, okay. Uh, those public comment. Do uh, any uh, other comments regarding this project? All right. I will entertain a motion to close public comment. I do. All right. I have a motion to close public. Second, Second. from Mr. Troy. All in favor say aye. 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 I have a motion to approve. I will second that. I have a second from Ms. Vanessa. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Motion carries. Best of luck to you guys. All right, and I motion to adjourn. Second, no, we still have one. Oh, that's right. I, I see oh, him. Oh, you're jumping the gun, man. I see man. him out there. I see him <laughs> yeah, so, so this final item was going to be presented by our director, Mr. Rick Vasquez. It's just to, uh, it's basically to repeal and replace the existing commercial parking regulations uh, for off street parking with interim commercial parking regulations. Trying to lighten the moment. Good evening, Chairman, uh, members of the Commission. Uh, this is a request for you to conduct a public hearing and provide a recommendation to the City Commission on repealing and replacing our existing uh, parking standards. Uh, the building official is out here and our plan reviewer. Uh, they're often criticized by the building community as our parking standards are too rigid and they're unable to approve projects if the project doesn't exactly meet a specific parking standard. And in the draft I provided you in the column that's gray, that's the current city uh, parking regulations, and if you look at them, uh, they provide a very specific standard. You must meet one space per dwelling unit. You must meet one space per 100 square feet or 300 square feet. And if you're not able to meet that specific standard, then our plans reviewer is not able to approve your plans. And so what the draft does is it provides a couple of tools uh, for a uh, project to seek alternative parking compliance standards. So in going through the ordinance, uh, you can use some of the on-street parking in front of your business to count towards your required parking. Currently, you're not able uh, to I'm sorry, do say, that. I'm sorry, say it, that part one more time. Uh, under the draft ordinance, you'd be able to use the area in front of your business in the public right-of-way to count towards your required parking as opposed to only using on-site parking to count towards your required parking. Okay. Okay? And... That's one of the changes. Uh, the other would be uh, we're establishing a minimum and a maximum. Another alternative strategy is to have joint use parking. So if your neighbor is an office that operates 8 to 5 and you're a restaurant where your peak may be 5 to 9, uh, you could share that parking under an agreement and we could calculate that shared parking under a joint use agreement. Uh, to enable you to meet the required parking standard, rather than requiring is each. Is only for commercial? Uh, well, I'm going I'm to only for commercial on that type of use, not on residential. Unless it was a multifamily project, then it would qualify for that. Um, it does provide provision for us to reduce required parking with some bike uh, infrastructure placed on site as well. Um, it does allow the staff to use the Institute of Transportation Engineers parking manual when a use is not identified in the code and a parking standard is not established, rather than having to deny the project or come uh, back through the Planning Commission and the City Commission for uh, approval. Uh, this would allow us to go to an industry standard manual and come up with a standard uh, and, and allow that project to move forward. Uh, I already mentioned the shared parking and looking at uh, uh, different uh, peak hour parking demand and how we would be able to share among uh, abutting property owners. I think I think that, that you're getting into some some problems. Now, let's say if you're going to ask the the, the the neighbor and myself, and she doesn't mm -hmm. use that parking today or tomorrow, and somebody of his friend comes by and is going to oh, hey, I want I want to park over here, so you're going to run me off. That kind of, to mix one with the other, I do not agree. Yeah. I would not agree on something like that. Yeah, so it doesn't happen if it's automatically. My parking, it's mine. If it's his, it's his. But you cannot mix, mix one with the other. Okay, so let's look. So uh, the, uh, it doesn't happen automatically. They would have to provide data to show us that there's shifts in demand for those particular parking spaces and that they could share that uh, parking. You, you can see that happening a lot already on, on developments like along Pablo Casell where there may not be enough parking during peak demand periods, people are either spilling into the street or they're going to the retail center across two streets and they're parking. And maybe it's not with permission currently by the current property owner. What we're saying is if you bring a project and you're not able to meet the, the required parking on site, if you can get together with your neighbor and flush out an agreement that you would submit to the city and it become part of the permit, that then we'd be able to move that project forward and not just kick it out yeah. and say you're unable to meet the required parking. So in the, is this in the packet? Yeah. Um, 
So it was in the packet? No. Should we get you that? Okay. So with that, um, if you have some reservations, we can uh, bring it back to you uh, next month. Uh, it should have been in your packets. Uh, but what the, the way the ordinance is set up uh, is we give you a comparison between a recommendation that we have, what the current uh, parking standard is in the city of Brownsville. We have another column where the Institute of Transportation Engineers has made some recommendations on some changes, given changes in retail the way it operates now. And then there's the Urban Land Institute's requirements, and they're, mo they're a more private enterprise oriented land development group. And so their, their standard may be a little less than the Institute of Transportation Engineers. So it gives us a better benchmark against what we actually have on the books today. And so um, what I'd like to do is have the commission make a recommendation up to the city commission uh, at some point once you're satisfied with that table. But, but since it's not in your packet, we'll bring it back to you uh, at your next meeting and we'll work out those errors in the department. Yeah, I would, I would, just to be clear, this is all part of us to ensure that, or at least to help with these commercial development projects, or even if it's a residential where, if it if it makes a little bit more sense to use a different standard, um, that we can continue moving something forward rather than just squashing it and scrapping that project. That, it, it, we can we can then speed up the process. You know, promote more of the development of this. You know, of commercial residential of the land throughout Brownsville. That's what this. The the point of this is is. Uh, it does. It is. requires. I mean, we'll obviously have a minimum and a maximum I standard. But if you're able to submit a, a a parking study, and that study uh, bears out that there is additional supply within the surrounding area, mm -hmm. and you can either contractually obligate that supply, or if it's on street supply in the public right of way, that can count towards your required parking, and we'd be able to move your project forward. Okay. Go ahead. One other thing that I have said before, and I and then nothing gets done about it, is. When you build a home, let's say with a one-car garage, then they tell it to, to the drive-thru. Drive mm -hmm. Instead of having what is like uh, 12 or 14 feet to drive to the, to the garage, mm -hmm. why can't we tell them to make it 18 feet where two cars can stay yeah. on that? And that will take away a car that will sit on the street. Mm -hmm. And that, will, that does not cost even 200 hours to, to do that. Yeah, I mean, and so, so that's what, exactly what this type of stuff has the yes, ability of doing. This type of stuff, I said it to the, before to the city. So now they listen to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, so, thank you. Uh, that's now, correct, we are, actually. We are developers, so we, we make subdivisions. Yeah. And I have said, why don't you make the drive, <laughs> drive in for, what is it, like 12 feet? What does it, you are a builder, when you drive in, it's 12 feet wide? Which, uh, which one? That's right. Like to a, to a car garage. The two cars, 18. No, one, go, one car garage. About 10. 10, okay. Make it, make him, make him pay 20. Yeah, so no, you can possible. Put in two cars, and this the car, the second car doesn't have to stay in the street. So we're not going to be, well, we're, we're not going to be voting. No, we're going to bring it back for yeah. a, what, what, what you could do is conduct your public hearing and close your public hearing, and I sure. can bring you back a final okay. draft. But, okay. Um, I just wanted to point out, Mr. Golonsky, under the residential, our, currently our ordinance requires one parking space per unit, yes. and ULI is recommending that but move up to one and a half. Two and three cars. And one, one, and a one and a half. And so uh, our recommendation um, is, is the uh, one and a half as opposed to the one per unit. Okay. okay. Well, we will at least, this is a, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's any comments? Regarding this item, make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a motion to close public hearing. Do I have a second? Okay, second, Mr. Golonsky. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And then no vote. You'll bring this back. So next month you'll have that in our. You gave us some reading the last time we were here. It was this. Uh, okay. It, yeah, it was this. Yeah. But I'll, we'll put it in your packet and make sure. Were you there got time. any changes? Because I. No. I do not agree. I'll make a motion to. I actually did. I'll talk to Let's talk about this afterwards. Um, okay, so uh, then that is the last item. I, I entertain a motion to. Uh, Are we going to table it? Close.
those? No, we don't need to do anything on it. Okay. No, you know, just yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Eric, anything else? No, sir. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Glonsky, do I have a second? Troy. Second. I second it. All right, Vanessa. Vanessa. Second. So all in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion adjourned. Adjourned.